Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The dirtiest of Washington politics, ATC privatization by deception. Red Bull Air Race Championship Series underway. And Alpha ramps up opposition to HR4 Section 744. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's April 25th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The ATC privatization war is not as over as we hoped, and ANN has warned us repeatedly there are still opportunities for Washington-style dirty tricks to create issues for us all. And they almost did. A deceptive last-minute and do-mean last-minute attempt by Representative Bill Schuster seeks to create a pseudo-ATC privatization system through deceit and subterfuge. After all but admitting he had given up on this concept, Schuster snuck in language to the forthcoming FAA reauthorization bill in order to create a similar airline control program to take over much of the aviation system. But late last night, we learned the attempt was killed, but it was a near miss and reason for everyone to think twice before calling the fight over ATC privatization all but over. Schuster attempted to create language in the bill that sought to create an Aerospace Management Advisory Council and creation of a chief operating officer that would oversee the air traffic control system and provisions of air navigation services. This would have effectively severed air traffic management and control from the FAA and place it directly under the Secretary of Transportation. The Advisory Council, COO, and Secretary would have been able to review and issue recommendations on rulemaking and cost-benefit analysis, procurement, advisory circulars, or service bulletins, among other things. The membership of the Advisory Council would have consisted of 13 members, with GA in the minority. It raised many of the safety issues and accountability issues presented in the original ATC privatization proposal. After the break, AHS rebrands as a vertical flight society. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call around the patch. AHS International has rebranded the society to be a more accurate reflection of its membership and role in the world. The board of directors of AHS International voted to change the identity of AHS to the Vertical Flight Society, the moniker that the society had been using in various forms for at least half a century. The board approved the change on March 6. The society will transition to the new name by January 1, 2019. The NTSB has released its probable cause report from an accident in which the pilot of a van's RV-4 struck a zipline cable in Oregonia, Ohio, on October 16, 2016. The pilot and a passenger were fatally injured when the airplane, an amateur-built RV-4, impacted the cable and terrain while maneuvering at low altitude. Toxicological testing of the pilot was positive for ethanol and tetrahydrocannabinol. The probable cause was listed as being the pilot's decision to fly at low altitude, which resulted in the collision with a zipline. 
Blue Angels No. 5 suffered about $1 million in damages when it ingested a bird into its engine during a performance Saturday at the Vero Beach Air Show in Florida. Catherine Cattle, the show's director of marketing, confirmed the incident to the media. The pilot landed the plane without incident. The Navy brought in another F-A-18 Hornet for the Sunday show, which went off without a hitch. A new helicopter instrument ground school course has been released by Helicopter Online Ground School. The video-based courses cover all the ground school for the helicopter instrument rating. The course is FAA certified for WINGS phase credits and can be found on the FAA Safety Online Course Provider page. Helicopter Online Ground School was founded by Kenny Keller in 2012. Well, that's it for today's Chirp Around the Patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The premiere of the Red Bull Air Race in France sparked high drama over the Riviera this past weekend. Looking for a return to the form that has twice made him runner-up in the World Championship, pilot Matt Hall flew first in the Final Four. The time held up when world champion Yoshihide Maruya of Japan earned a two-second penalty, and Dodor finished just behind Hall. But the shock of the round came when it was announced that Czech pilot Martin Shanka, who had apparently advanced to the Final Four, would in fact finish eighth due to a technical infraction. As a result, it was 2018 World Championship leader Michael Goulian who concluded the final round, his third place finish keeping him at the top of the overall leaderboard. The next stop in Japan could be pivotal. Not only is it a pressure-filled home race for the defending title holder Moroya in third overall, but Goulian has had his best start in more than nine seasons of racing. Plus, after a full year of improvements to a new race plane, the Australian Hall is hungry to take the crown himself. And only three points separate him from the American leader. Dodor, the 2016 champion, is chasing hard and fourth. And at fifth in the standing, Shanka will particularly feel he has something to prove after two disqualifications. Asia is next, resuming in Chiba, Japan, on May 26th through 27th. After these messages, ALPA ramps up opposition to H.R. 4, Section 744. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. ALPA is ramping up its opposition to language included in the most recent FAA reauthorization bill that would change the requirements for pilots aboard cargo aircraft. Last week, the House of Representatives released a new FAA reauthorization bill. The legislation is pilot partisan except for one section. The language in Section 744 was added by the Science Committee and directs R&D by NASA and FAA on single-piloted commercial cargo aircraft. ALPA says this provision poses significant aviation risk and undermines the safety of U.S. airspace. According to the union, air carriers are designed for more than one pilot in the flight deck because safety and operations dictate it. A two-person flight crew is necessary for the flight deck workload and also protects against the potential incapacitation of one pilot. Replacing the second onboard crew member with one in a remote location would also jeopardize the quality of crew resource management and crew coordination. Congressman Matt Cartwright has offered an amendment to remove Section 744. ALPA has urged its members to help let Congress know that a single pilot is not safe in commercial airline operations. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. 
See you tomorrow.